Welcome back. Uh, so, uh, in during last lecture, we were talking about the, the eruption which took place uh, along St. Mount Helens, uh, so uh, during 1980. So, uh, this is the, uh, how they have, uh, they have preserved uh, uh, the, uh, the level the forest to show the people that how, what happened, what during that event. Okay. And this is the, uh, the observatory, what they are having, the seismic uh, activities they try to uh, uh, monitor and the uh, the events which are mentioned these are all small events earthquake events which have been triggered and and, and recorded during uh, 2004 okay so this helps them in uh, identifying or knowing or predict that whether there will be an eruption uh, in short uh, period or not okay so this is one of the uh, and if you look at this picture at the center this shows the uh, the dome okay this is an enlarged one now this is again building up okay so they are watching it very uh, precisely and uh, <coughs> with an geodetic measurements also they are taking and trying to understand that how the, this uh, uh, the uh, the dome is growing in the center of the uh, the crater okay so then again with the with the help of the increase in dimensions of this one they will be able to predict that when next will be uh, next event will be okay and then they can they can so, so, this is again in from 2004 to 2006, they have taken this uh, uh, picture of Mount St. Helens, it is showing the deep magma showing the pushing up. So, so this portion is uh, again uh, 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 growing up okay, slowly after the 2004, this has been shown. Okay. So, uh, uh, if, you, if we take the volcano, if we define it is a gap in the earth's crust through which the molten rocks okay, or the magma comes out to the surface or you can say it is a conical mountain formed around the vent through which the molten mass comes out to the surface. Okay. So, this is the, uh, the definition which we see for the volcanoes okay, mainly. Now, uh, volcanoes in the past and in the recent uh, past they have affected uh, the climate also to some extent, but it is temporal. Okay. But in some of the events in the geological past, if you take they have completely ruined the, uh, the, uh, the species and they have they were responsible for, for completely uh, like extinction of many, many species on the earth uh, because of the massive volcanic eruption. Okay. Now, I have uh, if, if you see this table. Okay, we can you will be able to look at uh, we are just going to point out few uh, which uh, where is the volcanic eruptions. So, so on the on the on this side if you look at this is the volcanoes and then you are having the cities named here and this is and you are having the year and then you are having the effect. So, the what what effect was been created by uh, this volcanic eruptions. Okay. So, so, these are the historical events which are uh, from AD 78 which goes up to 2010. Okay. So, these are some of the, you know, I know not much uh, of the late, later events have been added after this, but if you can take into account and try to understand that, that volcanic eruption can result into a major devastation on the, on, on the earth and it may result into the extinction of, of many species. Okay. So, Vesuvian uh, volcano, if you take, it uh, was in, from Italy, okay. it destroyed the Pompeii uh, uh, city and killed almost like 16,000 people in that time. Okay. And the city was buried by volcanic activity and the re, uh, rediscovered, this was rediscovered in 1595. So, you have the, uh, the, the cast which were been, been, been formed and many people were being killed while sleeping. So, you can have, you can see those cast okay, of, 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 of the, uh, the, uh, the, the persons or the people and the animals which were been uh, buried during this eruption. Okay. It was very massive, very fast. Okay. Then uh, another which you can take is the uh, Tambora. It is uh, from Indonesia. It occurred in 1815 uh, and this resulted into global cooling. Okay. So, eruption 
will result into the uh, it will pour out lot of ash and the the gases in the in the atmosphere and which resulted into the global cooling okay and killed almost like 10000 people uh, so and so this this resulted that produced year without a summer okay so we we did not see summer uh, so then this people they did not see summer during that period okay that is in 1815 okay then another one was tremendous uh, the dangerous explosive one as is Karakatau, it is again in Indonesia and if you remember this we were talking about the, the Pacific ring of uh, fire and all that. So, this is this is coming to the Indonesian part. Okay. So, we are having in 1883 another tremendous explosive which occurred and it killed more than 36,000 people okay. and it also resulted in the tsunami because it was close to the ocean and it resulted in the formation of tsunami also and which also was uh, this tsunami was also experienced in India in 1883 Karakato and then we are having another one okay uh, that is Mount Pili uh, which was in 1902 and it resulted into and it killed almost like 30,000 people okay in a minute okay and then we are having Villarica Chile again it forced almost 30,000 people to excavate their homes okay and this was in 63 and 64 and then we are having again that what we were discussing about in the beginning this Mount St. Helens, Washington DC, United States 1980. So, debris avalanche, uh, lateral blast and mud flows and this mud flow was created because it was been the, the cone was been kept by uh, the ice or oh, sorry snow. So, that resulted into the mud flow of that region It killed almost like 57 people destroyed more than 100 houses ok. But now they have restricted no, no, uh, nobody stays in the vicinity of that uh, volcanic eruption. Okay, and then we are having uh, Mount uh, Pinatuba in again Philippines. It was tremendous uh, explosion again, very much similar to what we are looking at in uh, Karakatau. And this was uh, like uh, it combined with the typhoon, and it resulted into the uh, the people were been killed almost like thousands where people were forced to evacuate from that or. Um, and then around 740 people were been killed. Okay, and then we are having uh, again from Chile, 2008, uh, and then the finally this one. Okay, that is from Iceland. Okay, so this uh, uh, was the event uh, in the Iceland which emitted lot of ash in the in the atmosphere, and it affected the uh, the, uh, the the uh, the flights in that region. Okay, uh, so this these are the uh, some of the events which are. Uh, uh, the historical events which resulted into the massive destruction. Okay. Now, eruption of Vesuvian very quickly we will see and that what we were talking about the Italy. Okay. So, you can see this type of cast which are still exist okay, in the region and it was rediscovered uh, in uh, 1500 uh, uh, AD. Okay. Almost like archaeology excavated the remains of some 2000 people okay, who would get suffocated and then got killed during this earthquake, but the more than 16,000 people were been killed during this earthquake. Okay. So, you can see the plasters or the cast molds of the victims. In this picture, you are having dog and then the people who are who have been killed. Okay. Then uh, Tambora again in 1815 uh, killed almost 10,000 people. Uh, this is from Indonesia and then you are having uh, Mount Pili uh, from uh, uh, Caribbean and we are having sound Saint Mount St. Helens before and after it shows. So, this this part if you look at was been blown off okay during the uh, during during the earthquake uh, during the volcanic eruption okay. So, you can see this has been the, the crater which was in form. So, top was been blown off okay completely and during the eruption uh, what it says that much of the the northern side of the composite volcano okay, was blown away and the altitude of the summit was reduced by almost 400 meters. Okay. So, this resulted into the reduction of the uh, the, uh, uh, the height also. Okay. So, almost like 400 meters was been reduced if the top was been eroded okay. and uh, it was around uh, uh, 9677 feet before uh, 8 uh, 1360 after and then it remained something like this. Okay. So, uh, the height was reduced by almost 400 
meters or so. So, this is an uh, the exam the photograph of Karakato and as I told that it is close to the ocean it resulted into the, it, uh, the formation of the tsunami. Okay. So, one of the deadliest event in Indonesia of uh, August 26, 1883 started to emit ash and then exploded. Okay. Explosion was heard almost as far as 4600 kilometers okay, from the, the place of the eruption. Okay. It resulted into tsunami, effect was felt worldwide. Okay. So, this was a massive volcano which occurred in, in uh, uh, 19th century okay. and almost like about 20 cubic kilometer of debris was been ejected during this eruption okay. and the temperature around the globe was reduced or dropped by almost 1 degree. Okay. So, this resulted into the dropping of the, uh, the, uh, the, the temperature also. Now, suppose this is only one volcano which has erupted and which has resulted into the chain, the, uh, the effect around the um, or effect to the environment. Now, if you keep on erupting many volcanoes, then what will happen? Okay. So, that is another uh, part which one, one should think of okay, that it can affect the, the climate also. Then uh, Pina Tuba again in Philippine, it was again a massive one. So, Pina Tuba eruption was in 1991, ejected vast amount of volcanic uh, ash and sulfur dioxide and up to about 30 kilometers in the atmosphere, it was too high. Okay. And uh, this dust cloud temporarily lowered the average global temperature, again it resulted into that. Okay. And that was the second largest in the 20th century. Then again the Iceland one, which erupted and this was in 2010. And during this, uh, uh, all the flights okay, in and out the Britain airport was were grounded. Okay. So, they, they it affected the region because of the, uh, uh, the dust okay, which about the ash which was been pushed up in the atmosphere. Now, uh, let us start with the igneous rocks part. Okay. So, if we talk about the igneous rocks, we when we talked about the, the cycle, rock cycle, we started, we talked about the, that the magma which has melted, which will come up and then it will solidify. Okay. So, in the beginning which we were talking about that this magma which comes out on the surface or it remained or it, that is in form of intrusion or it is coming uh, right up to the surface in form of an extrusion. Okay. So, we will have extrusive rocks and we will have intrusive rocks. This is just to show that that the volcanic eruptions okay, around uh, its uh, periphery or in surroundings will create a very beautiful landscape. Okay. And this is an example of uh, one of the the beauty, uh, beautiful uh, volcanic uh, volcano, volcanic cone that is Mount Fuji uh, in Japan with the steep conical mounds and can see uh, that how beautiful it looks like. Okay. But it is more uh, again a dangerous one because it emits tephra and lava. Okay. So, it can result into the devastation. So, the height of uh, the, uh, uh, it is around the uh, 3706 meter high and it erupted in, in 1707 okay that was the last eruption and i visited this place so i can i can see but with this the top portion was been covered by the, uh, the, the so it was difficult to see the the top portion okay so let us look at that how uh, what are the different like composition of magma here okay so one is that like you are having fluid uh, fluidity which is in one important property of the, the magma or viscosity of the magma depends upon the content of the silica. Okay. So, if you are having silica, we can say silica rich or silica poor uh, 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 magma. Okay. So, silica rich magmas are termed as acidic magmas and uh, silica poor are termed as basic magma and uh, they are more viscous, they are this, uh, this are less viscous, so, silica poor are less viscous. So, do not spread um, and piles up at one place. Okay. So, one thing is in terms of the hazard, whereas this one, I will talk about the hazard here. Now, another one, silica poor, more faster and occupies larger space. Okay. So, if you know that what type of uh, silica about the magma will be erupted by uh, the volcano which is sitting close to you, you can judge that how fast the magma will move. Okay. Either it will be it is, if it is an acidic magma, 
then it will move very slow whereas it is the uh, the poor cilia the basic magma then it will move comparatively faster and cover larger distance okay so it will cover larger distance whereas it will keep on piling at the same place okay however again the viscosity of the magma is considerably influenced by the temperature too okay so when the temperature is low it is more viscous and when the temperature is higher it is less viscous so this is one important property of the the magma okay silica rich and silica poor uh, bigneous rocks are are the again latent term which has been used as fire so we have seen that whenever there is an eruption uh, there is an uh, lot of magma which is coming up along with the fire and all that okay so if you classify the igneous rocks we can classify as we were talking in the beginning is extrusive rocks or the intrusive rocks okay so we'll see one by one the different type of igneous rocks in this one okay so form of the igneous uh, intrusive igneous rocks okay mainly so uh, uh, these are that either they are coming right up to the surface through the cone or they are they are remaining within the um, uh, the earth crust uh, so different type of forms we'll see very quickly okay so commonly observed forms of plutonic rocks so intrusive rocks are also termed as plutonic rocks so this you can remember here they are termed as plutonic rocks observed in the field are mainly okay so we are having dikes we have sills we say localites volcanics neck volcanic necks or we are having batholites etc these are the different type of forms of intrusive rocks okay mainly now based on the attitude that is the the angle okay between the country rock where they intrude okay so we are having the rocks which are sitting on the surface or the or the crust and the intrusion will take place from below so depending on that whether it is um, almost right angle or it is parallel uh, to the beds and all that or the uh, the layers of the different rocks then that what we call the country rock okay so uh, the different type of uh, intrusions are been termed either it is concordant or it is discordant with uh, looking to the attitude of the of the associated rocks in which the intrusion is taking place okay so here there are different uh, forms which are been shown uh, which we have like uh, either it is volcanic pipes okay volcanic pipes are also uh, very important because I'll, i maybe in the last slide i'm talking about the kimberlite uh, pipes and all that okay and they are also termed as diamond differs because these are the source for uh, the formation of diamonds and all that okay so volcanic pipes then we are having sills so sills are uh, the the structures which are almost parallel to the beds okay so these are these are the different uh, rock layers and this is what we term as in country rock okay so the intrusion is taking place within in the country rock coming right up to the surface through the cone and this is the pipe here or the conduit and right flowing on the surface there is a cone okay so this is a composite so one eruption another eruption will result into the formation of the composite volcanoes okay and then we are having this this the conduit or we can say the volcanic pipes and if the uh, the, uh, the the intrusion is parallel to the bedding planes or parallel to the uh, the country rock uh, um, then we term that as a dike okay if they are discordant in nature okay then we term that as a dike so so these are the same and then we are having in sort of an a domal shape uh, intrusion is there so if you if you try to if you try to uh, uh, like uh, uh, eruption is there that is a plume sort of thing which goes up okay which also result into the for the deformation on the surface okay and this is this has been termed as localite okay and then wider areas it has been covered they are also termed as stock or batholites okay so this we will quickly look at that what are the different types of forms so all igneous rocks are formed by cooling of magma either by extrusion on the on the surface or by intrusion okay so this is very important part which you can remember this are termed as extrusive rocks and intrusive rocks okay so either we call them intrusive rocks and extrusive rocks okay now extrusive and intrusive rocks these are rocks contains larger as well as smaller size minerals okay the size of the mineral depends on the cooling time okay of the magma magma when flows on the surface 
cools faster. Okay, so when you are bringing the magma on the surface, it will cool very fast. Okay, hence allowing insufficient time for large crystals to form. Okay, because crystals or crystallization needs time. So if you are allowing the magma for a longer period to cool down, then the larger crystals will be formed. But if you are not allowing them and cooling it faster, then the, the it will the very small fine grain crystals will form. Okay, so larger crystals to grow, uh, whereas this is this is for the the intrusive one. Okay, so magma when flows on the surface cools faster, hence allows insufficient time for the larger crystal to form. Okay, uh, whereas the extrusive rocks which are fine. Okay? So so the extrusive rocks which we see on the surface are fine grains because they don't allow uh, the magma to cool slower. Okay, so cools faster insufficient time for the larger crystals to form. Okay. So, the extrusive rocks because the magma coming on the surface, so extrusive rocks will be fine grain one. Okay. Now, uh, the opposite one is the magma which intrude okay, underlying uh, uh, with the underlying rocks below the earth surface. These are termed as intrusive rocks, cools slowly, okay. whereas here it cools faster, this cools slowly provide sufficient time to form larger mineral grains or the crystals. Okay. They are, so, the intrusive rocks are coarse grain. So, this is an important point which I was mentioning there that depending on the cooling of magma, you should remember that one is extrusive rocks are fine grain because the magma which comes on the surface cools faster. So, it does not allow the larger crystal to form whereas, the, the intrusive rocks okay, which are cooling slowly has sufficient time to form the larger crystals, hence they are coarse grain. Okay. Now, the other part which uh, the forms very quickly we will look at okay, dikes and cells. So, we are having concordant uh, uh, relationship between the, uh, the, intru uh, the, uh, the country rocks. So, we are having some angle between the attitude of the, the intrusive rocks and the, uh, the, uh, the, the country rock. Okay. So, they are discordant in nature. Okay, cuts across the bedding plane of the rocks in which they are intruded, vertical to steeply inclined okay, and sheet like body, extensive lateral in dimension. Okay. Thickness varies widely from an inch up to hundreds of feet. Okay. So, it is they are quite wide also some places you will find. Okay. Injected through fractures joints. So, you are having cracks or fractures which are the, in the or the, the, the portion of weak planes, there you will have an intrusion of and the formation of the uh, the, uh, the dikes and all that. Okay. So, this has been shown here. So, this is the portion with the contact here of the, the dike which has been shown and these are the bedding planes here you can see here this one. Okay. These are all the bedding planes. So, these are almost discordant in nature with the with the intrusion of the with the country rock. Okay. So, this is termed as dike okay. and the dimension as has been seen it varies from inch to up to like almost like hundreds of feet. Okay. So, we are having uh, the dimension is much much larger at some places. Okay. Then we are having cells again they are they are all parallel to uh, the bedding planes okay. and then we are having localites. Localites are Again, uh, is a discordant body, okay, which uh, uh, with the flat bottom and convex upward domal shape uh, feature, okay, and this will result into the deformation. So this is what what has happened. This has been deformed, okay. These layers have been deformed when there is an intrusion here, okay. So this is uh, and one typical uh, nature uh, of of the localites, okay. We are having so when a viscous magma is injected rapidly along the bedding planes. As it cannot spread, uh, spreads it pushes up the overlying rocks. Okay, and this is the pushing is will result into the deformation when it keeps on piling up. Okay, so it causes folding. Okay, this causes folding of the overlying rocks or the we can say that it warps the overlying rocks when there is an intrusion, rapid intrusion or the injection of the magma. Then another one which is more or less similar, but are the larger bodies. Okay. And they are also irregular in shape and occupies larger area. They have been termed as uh, batholiths. Okay. So, their sides um, 
um, are sloping away. So, this will be sloping away from one another. Okay. So, that is an intrusion of them and makes them larger extending downward at greater depths. Okay. So, because they are they are uh, like this, they will be having this will be wider in shape. Okay. So, this portion will be comparatively wider as from the top. Okay. So, these are termed as batholiths. Okay. So, their occurrence is commonly associated with the mountain building activity. So, we are, when we are having the and then the formation which is going on along the plate tectonic plate boundaries. So, mostly you will be able to see the, uh, the, uh, the formation of the batholiths in that. Okay. So, either they will uh, comprise the granites or granodiorite in composition. Stocks are also similar to that, okay. but they are again and very wide bodies as compared to uh, they are, are some smaller irregular bodies within within 10 kilometers, whereas the betholiths will be more much more wider in shape. Okay, so stock is mostly seen on the top of that. Okay, then we are having a, a, this is a bismillith is again cylindrical shaped body, okay. and it uh, is developed uh, with when high viscous magma or the acidic magma is injected because of the lateral spreading and all that. Okay. So, this also, these are the different forms of the, but this we cannot see from the surface, we have to look at subsurface and all that. A variety of igneous rocks, now we, if we take, okay, then what we see is that again the formation, then the identification criteria. Uh, so, similar to what we learn the Bowen reaction series, this also uh, is important because the cooling of the, the magma will uh, result into the different type formation of the of, of the uh, crystals and the minerals and the different aggregates of minerals will result into the formation of the different rocks. Okay. So, for example, if we take uh, granite, then we are having feldspar, we are having uh, quartz, we are having biotite, we are having uh, the plagioclase feldspar and all that. So, aggregate of this will result into the formation of, uh, of different type of uh, rocks okay, or, or the different type of igneous rocks mainly. Now, if you are looking at again, this is the, the same Bowen reaction series which we looked at. So, we are having kelp rich and the sodic rich uh, feldspar and then we are having the uh, discontinuous series here and then, then resulting into the alkali feldspar and all that okay, and then finally, resulting in the formation of quartz. So, we are having different type of rocks here with this composition we are having basalt and gabbros, andesite and diorite, these are the names of different rocks, uh, which we will talk in detail in the, uh, the next lecture and then we will see. Uh, uh, so, I will stop here and we will continue in the next lecture and we will start with the igneous rocks. Thank you very much.